it makes people so emotional. It comes at you like a freight train. You really? see it out on the horizon and you just don't pay much attention to it like right now. But then when it finally hits and goes completely dark, it takes you by surprise. It felt like I was encountering the ocean for the first time. How far would you travel to see this again? Uh, Australia in 2027. Really? You're yeah, going? Yeah, for sure. This is me, Noah, and Jennifer. We're UNC Asheville students, and we took a seven-hour road trip to Indianapolis to explore the eclipse. But first, I interviewed an astronomy professor to understand what we'd be seeing. My name is Judy Beck. I'm in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, and I teach physics and astronomy courses at various different levels. A solar eclipse is like the most awesome natural phenomena in the universe, and it occurs when the the moon moves directly between the Earth and the Sun. So the shadow of the moon falls on the Earth. But the really special thing about a total solar eclipse is that the moon blocks the entire visible portion of the Sun. So it's an amazing coincidence that the Sun is about 400 times farther away from the Earth than the moon and also 400 times bigger. So in the sky, they appear to be the same size. And when you completely block the visible portion of the sun, then this um, layer of the atmosphere of the sun called the corona shows up. And we can't see the corona normally because it's dimmer than the night sky, but it appears when the sun itself is blocked by the moon. So people are trying to figure out what mechanism it is that heats it to even hotter than the bright surface of the sun that we see. The sun's about a hundred times bigger than the earth. So um, about a million Earths would fit inside the sun if you could put them in there. The moon's orbit is tilted a little bit with respect to the plane of the Earth's orbit around the sun. And the moon actually comes between the Earth and the sun once a month. We call it a new moon. But because of this slight tilt in the orbit, the moon falls ever so slightly below or above the sun in a, in a typical month and we don't get an eclipse. So it's only when they line up exactly, which happens about every year and a half or so, that we get this solar eclipse. That shadow is so small, it's only a total solar eclipse in a very restricted portion of the Earth. So after this total solar eclipse passing through North America, the next total solar eclipse that will hit the continental U.S. won't be until 2044. So there'll be one somewhere. They can be in the ocean, yeah. they can be on different continents. You can pull up a map of solar eclipses and you get these like curved stripes at, at various seemingly random yeah. places around the globe, but actually they're very predictable. Never look directly at the sun without eye protection. So this, this is true on a regular day, just like during a solar eclipse. Um, people sometimes have this, this idea that there's something particularly different about the solar radiation during an eclipse, and there isn't. The things that are different is, number one, people are talking about the eclipse, and so you want to look at it, but it's, you, you could cause irreversible damage to your eyes if you stare at the sun. And number two, because the moon is covering this part of the sun, um, the light is dimmer, and so our natural biological reactions of squinting in your pupils getting smaller mm -hmm. don't happen. So you need to either use special certified eclipse glasses, and I think I have a pair here, <laughs> right? So something like this. They are so dark that if you look at anything else, you will not see it. Filters for binoculars and telescopes need to be even stronger because that concentrates the light even more so. Now the one exception to the don't look at the sun is if you are in the path of totality only for those couple minutes of totality when yeah. nothing is showing except the corona, is it safe to look at the sun without the glasses. So the impact that the solar eclipse has on people, animals, birds, temperature is also fascinating. Mm -hmm. Dogs start barking, people yell, it's so exciting. <laughs> um, the temperature really drops. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that a student could certainly do would be to, to measure temperatures throughout the eclipse mm -hmm. and sort of yeah. plot what's happening there. Yeah. Cool. My very first eclipse, um, I was a sophomore in college and, and went with a professor and my job was to man this one telescope with this one piece of equipment and we were in Canada and the temperature dropped so fast that it froze. 
<laughs> so I um, wow. half halfway through wow. um, the videotaping, the whole thing stopped because <laughs> it was just that that quick. Are there any historical or cultural aspects of eclipses that you know of? Yes. So one of them has to do with um, the discovery of helium. Helium is is a very light element, and it had not yet been discovered on Earth, but some scientists were taking a spectrum of the sun during an eclipse and they, they looked at this spectrum and recognized a lot of the lines. Oh, that belongs to hydrogen, that belongs to hydrogen. And there was this line that they couldn't match up with any known line. Hmm. And it turned out it was this element helium, which was found later on Earth, and they named it helium for Helios, the sun. Okay. That model you have. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand how far away the moon is and yes. how small it is. All right. So, one tricky thing about our solar system is it's really hard to find a scale model that has both sizes and distances mm -hmm. to scale. Because once you get the sizes to scale, if it's going to fit in a page, they're too tiny. Yeah. And if you get the distances to scale, you, you know, you, you have to stretch across an entire quad. So this is just the Earth and the Moon to scale. So if the, if the Moon, if the Earth were that size, um, about an inch, the moon would be about a quarter inch and they would be that far apart. And so imagine, you know, shining a bright light over here and making that shadow fall on the earth. And if you were in just the little spot in there inside that shadow, you would be experiencing totality. You would be seeing the total solar eclipse. The sun on the same model, this is a yardstick, mm -hmm. the sun would actually be about three yards in diameter. So three times this is the size of the sun. So this whole earth moon thing, feet. yeah, fits inside the sun and it'd be about two tenths of a mile away. So really big compared to this and really far away, which is another reason why it's so amazing that um, they line up so perfectly. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Sure. Awesome. Good luck. What's your name? John Mitchell. I came from Chicago. Chicago. Okay. How yeah. long of a drive was that? Oh, I came down on Saturday. It was no problem. Three hours. And what do you have here? So I've got two cameras, I've got a telephoto, I'm going to try to shoot up close to the eclipse, the corona, and then I've got a wide angle over here to try to get the um, sort of the environment and take a sequence of shots and I'll try to put together a composite photograph out of that that just sort of shows the whole sequence through the three some odd hours, three and a half hours of the eclipse. Is this the first eclipse you've seen? No, I was in Carbondale seven years ago, and unfortunately, I only caught a glimpse yeah. of it. But that got oh. me really excited to try again. So was seven the years weather, later, the weather not good, or were you not in the total? No, I was in the total area, but um, mm -hmm. the clouds came in at the last minute, and yeah. big thick clouds, and it was like, oh no. So these are high clouds. So I think we're going to be good. It doesn't look yeah. bad. I'm Mackenzie. Uh, I'm Aurora. Is this the first eclipse you guys are going to be seeing? First total eclipse. Total, yeah. Cool. Are you excited? Yes. Yes. Well, do you guys believe in any spiritual or cultural things related to the eclipse? I got my crystals. I'm doing little like. Okay. Can you tell me more about stuff. that? Just uh, doing some meditation and stuff. You know, nice. journaling and doing little tarot cards and stuff like that. Cool. Do you think the, the eclipse will have any impact on that? Uh, it's supposed to be really good for drawing all different types of energies. Okay. So I'm hoping that it'll bring some, some good energy. I'm Charlie. I'm Kathy. We came from Crown Point, Indiana. Well, actually from Merrillville, Indiana. Okay. Merrillville and Crown Point. I make and sell these hats. I am the manufacturer of the highest quality propeller beanies being made in the world today. I make really? them in Crown Point, Indiana. Okay. They are um, the same material and workmanship you would expect to find in a Major League Baseball cap at approximately the same price. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is my business card. Do you guys believe in any spiritual or like cultural aspects tied to the eclipse? Not really. I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me I, why. I, because I, it makes people so emotional. Mm -hmm. It it touches something in, you know, deep inside. Yeah. I think it's it mean, means something. I think it's important. For I sure. consider it great entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> it, it comes at you like a freight train. 
You really? see it out on the horizon and you just don't pay much attention to it, like right now. You know, it's fully underway. It's probably about a third coverage right now. And everybody doesn't care. But then when it finally hits and goes completely dark, it takes you by surprise even though you're really expecting it. Yeah. It, still, it still grabs your attention, yeah. Anything else you want to share? No, not really. I just hope that everybody awesome. enjoys it. My name's Jed. I'm Elijah. Isaac. And where'd you guys come from? Indy. A few we live. blocks away. Really? We're hoping to capture the corona, which is the atmosphere of the sun. Right now, we don't have like a full total filter like these, so it's a little bit overexposed with all the light coming through. But once there's a total eclipse and it's dark, we'll turn down the aperture and then hopefully be able to catch the slight ring of light that's showing up around the moon. Have you guys seen other eclipses, like the 2017 one? Yeah. We did see the partial, but just a sliver partial. of it. No, yeah, it was yeah. barely anything. Besides the camera, did you bring anything else, like crafts or...? Just like snacks. Takis snacks, yeah. and eyeglasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Noah. All right, Adam. What has happened that you um, weren't expecting? Oh, um, the clouds did not cover it and ruin it like they did for me in 2017. What do you think about the brightness right now? Because people um, on the video can't like, really tell. I feel like I'm wearing my transition sunglasses, except I'm not. Also, it's kind of cold. And what are you doing with your phone? I'm going to film the whole environment because there's going to be like a million pictures of the actual eclipse, but you know, I was like, this is where I was. and. Here's what it looked like when the eclipse happened. Thank you. What has happened so far that you weren't expecting? Um, I wasn't expecting the blue to become muted. Like the skies were blue and now they're like some pale color. I wasn't expecting the shadows to be different. Uh, it kind of feels like I have sunglasses on, but obviously I don't. It feels like they just cranked down the saturation of light. Of light, yeah. <laughs> Take the glasses off. Noah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Dude. My phone, like, can't see anything. It's like it's nighttime. Okay. What are you feeling right now? I, I feel very content. <laughs> Um, is it what you were expecting? Um, it's different seeing it in person. What's the What's the biggest change that you would want to um, describe to someone seeing this through a screen? Way more crisp. Way more crisp. Cooler. The colors are cooler. Mm -hmm. oh, she's popping right, off. She <laughs> <laughs> I was honestly surprised that you could look right at it without the glasses when the sun was over it. I was expecting to like burn my eyes out of my sockets if I didn't use these, but you're like, no, 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 take them off. You can stare right at it and see the ring. Yeah. Now, of course, I can't look up because as the moon moves away from the sun, it's yeah, that's like <laughs> even just a little sliver right now, and it, I can't look at it, it'll hurt. <laughs> yeah. My name's James. Yeah, um, I knew it was gonna be cool. I was like in the 70% range when the eclipse happened back in 2017. Being in the path of totality, I absolutely recommend it. When 2045, go travel, because it felt like I was encountering the ocean for the first time. Like if, if you imagine like a kid, like you've never seen the ocean before and you're like, whoa, look at the horizon. Like the moment it crossed over, I was like, holy cow. And like. Everybody was, was just losing it out here. They were all like, whoa! There were these little, like, red dots kind of around the sun. There's one, like, prominent one down at the bottom. Yeah. Apparently that was a solar flare. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I think right at about, like, 7% totality. I mean, right right about 7% left to get to totality. I saw, like, a weird, like, streak kind of go in front of the sun. I have no idea if that was just, like, a, a plane or, like, that had just traveled in front of it. I, I kind of was like, Sean, like my friend Sean is there. I was like, did you see that? Am I seeing aliens or something? What <laughs> but all, I, all in all, it was really cool. It's special. So I booked hotels across the entire trajectory from Texas all the way to upstate New York. 
so maybe five or six hotels. And how I was long, canceling and how them and remaking them and canceling and remaking them. How long have you been planning the whole thing? Oh, more than two years. No, I think it was just absolutely amazing. I mean, I hope everybody here had a great time. It was like awesome. And uh, we'll see you in 20 years. How far would you travel to see this again? Uh, Australia in 2027. Really? You're yeah, going? Yeah, for sure.